And then what happened is that when I finished my term, this was maybe around 2002, when I finished my term as president of ISEC in Egerton, I decided I'm going to go for the national office. And at that point, everyone was telling me it has never happened before. All the presidents usually come from Nairobi. Mm. And I was still a student in Egerton University, by the way. So guys are like, how are you going to manage being president of ISEC, the national office? is in Nairobi at University of Nairobi, and you're still a student. I'm like me, I'll figure it out when I get there, but I'm going for it. Impossible is not impossible. Yeah. I, <laughs> I had been through so many scenarios yeah. of being broke in the middle of nowhere and you know, still figuring it out mm. and still getting back to Kenya and all sorts of things. That's why I was like, we went through so many inspiring experiences that just mm. completely shattered mm. that mm. impossible is nothing. Um, so I can, I, can, I can give you one story. There's one time, we, were, we had applied for a conference in Botswana. This is, I think, when I was president of uh, Isaac in Egerton. And we were going with my roommate and another guy. Yeah. And two days to the event, we didn't have all the money. I told those guys, pack your bags. We are going to Nairobi. There's no way we are not going for this conference. We packed our bags. We came to Nairobi. Continued hustling, hustling. We were on the plane. We went to Botswana and we came <laughs> back. And all this hustling would just be like, like Yanni, you, you just, anyone you can tow Anisha cash, you tow Anisha them. Yeah, cash. but Your going, we're going. Yes. You'll changa together, you'll do this. And that's why now during holidays we were like motivated to find like jobos because the money we would accumulate during that time is what would sometimes fund some of the trips that we would go for. all our help went to isaac trips. <laughs> it never went to anything paying for yeah. school or whatever well a lot of people were blowing it on going out and yeah. buying computers and stuff all our help went towards isaac trips but yeah. that i mean ah, yeah, okay first and foremost the, this presidency thing do you yeah. make, what happens so yeah so we go through the elections uh there would be campaigning and you know guys would vote as universities so me i just did my campaigns but i remember that by the time we were getting to the election i was like okay this has never been done before so even if i don't win at least i've gone through the experience of of running and i was running against uh, somebody who was uh uh, from University of Nairobi. So mm. I'd felt, I don't know, I didn't feel like I had a very big chance. But that's the first time I, I ran a campaign. So I had guys on the ground. <laughs> I had guys, while conference, it would, it would happen at a conference. So when conference sessions are going on, I had guys who would just be pushing for, you must vote for Joram, you must Nini. Yeah. I remember I gave a very inspirational, I now learned the art of inspirational <laughs> speeches. Um, I gave a very inspirational speech about what my journey had been like and everything. So come results, I was elected as a national president. <laughs> For me? <maybe>? Yeah. <laughs> Obama, yeah. yes we can. <laughs> and I remember like celebration broke out across the entire country because nobody from outside Nairobi ever had. So the guys of Egerton, guys of Moi were now super excited that finally someone had broken the Nairobi, that chain of yes. Nairobi people taking that seat. And so, yeah, so for the next one year, I was president. So, okay, uh, what, what does it mean to be the president Kenya. of ISAC? What does, what does that mean now? So, basically, you oversee, I think at the time we had... Are you paid? Yes, there was a little bit of a stipend. Yeah. It wasn't much, it was like 5K or something. Yeah, but it was, the it exposure, just, you could yeah. go to... It. But at that level, uh -huh. uh, the partners of ISAC were companies like PwC, you know, Shell. It's your, your, your who's who. Who would? They are the same people who would be sponsoring exactly, the international a lot of them were, program. Were DHL, yeah. A lot of them were in Isaac. Yes, as they, and as a they, lot of them were in Isaac yes. before. Because in Kenya, you have from your Isaac Awondos to your Polikapi Gathers to what? a whole line of people. I hear even Kinawegara and James Mwangi. I had the other party animal. Like <laughs> there's there's a whole history. trail of people, history of people all the way from the 70s, who were part of ISEC and who went on exchange programs. And that's what gave some of them a head start in their careers. So what did so being president... So literally, Nairobi uh -huh. is run by ISEC as, yeah. So what did, what, 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 did ISEC, what did being president do for you this time? So, so, so as president, you're the one who's managing the different campuses. Uh -huh. And each of the campuses are chapter and then they form like a voting block and like the council that makes decisions nationally. And then I have a team at the national level that I also work with now too manage so like one person is a marketer one person is hr one person is finance so it's literally like running a company yo yeah so when you learn in, still in uni yeah, how are you, you get, you what, get what audited, is this? this is 2003 to 2004 i am 23 yeah <laughs> so you get audited by pwc your accounts you have a board of uh advisors 
made up of corporates, so like my chair was Tom Gitogo, who was formerly the CEO of uh, CIC. At the what? time, he was in, uh, he was in, yeah, he was in, was it PwC? Yeah, so we had people in the corporate sector, whether former ISACs or board members, mm. who would now hold us accountable. So you're literally running like a corporate organization. So you have to keep your finances well, you know, you have to manage your people, you have to make sure that our programs are running profitably. Mm. We would do things like dinners, you know, manage the exchange program, it would be measured on the basis of the exchange program. And did you have affiliation now with the ISEC Global? Yes, so now as president, in fact, there are certain things you must participate in globally. So that's why you go for the international president's meeting and you meet presidents. At that time, ISEC was in like 80 something countries. So you meet presidents from the other 80 something countries. We had something called the International Congress and they always are happening in different countries. So yes. different countries are hosting. So that's how I ended up traveling to very many countries. Because <laughs> every year you find a different conferences in a different country. And at that level, those, those ones are mandatory. You have to attend to maintain your membership. Yeah. But by then, because your partnerships are with corporates, when they you, fund these yeah. things, you're, you're able you're to fund good. the tickets yeah. and that kind of stuff. And then also when you're a leader and people know like you're a good inspirational leader. So for some of their national conferences, we would have invitations amongst presidents. So like I would invite the German one or invite the Nigerian yes. one or this kind of thing. So do also form... But that network must be crazy now. I tell people that there is 80 something countries in the world where if I need anything, all I need to do is make a phone call and I'll be sorted. Ach, and it has ended up, yeah, yeah. you know, doing so many in other fact, things in for fact, my career down the let line. Let me even say, yeah. so I know uh, one of them, one of your, the people who was at Sandbox. Yes. Um, HR. Uh -huh. uh, what's her name again? Juliet. Yeah. Juliet, also yes. An Isaka, yes uh. Jul I know she was an Isaac. Yes, she was an Isaac. Yes, so is that yes. where you guys connected? Yes, 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 yes. That like the network that ISEC has built for me to date. I mean, as I talk about my corporate story, you'll hear how it connects. Uh, but it gave me an unparalleled local corporate network and global network. And the thing is that as ISECers, we would never worry about our careers post ISEC. <laughs> you just <laughs> know. You're like you're on first name basis with all these guys who are running Kenyan corporate sector. And you, you were the president. So you'd literally, yeah. So by the time you're president, you know you have a fast track. You can ask your board members, Nini. Like you get hooked up a serious job easily. But we also had a culture that by the time you finish, uh, because we knew how powerful the exchange program was, you'd always work outside the country for a while uh, before either you come back and settle down and many people have never come back. So they stay in the countries yes. they went to for the exchange program. Yeah, so okay, I, okay. I also uh, yeah, took yeah. that path. So afterwards. when you were president, yeah. were you, did, did that mean you left school? No. So I used to be on that Mathri from Nakuru to Nairobi quite a bit. So there are several things I did to make my life a bit bearable. I partnered with my lecturers uh -huh. where I would just, from the beginning of the year, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm clear who my lecturers are, I would just come and tell them, look, I'm very involved in this organization called ISEC and as a result, from time to time I'm called upon to represent the country in different <laughs> whatever the sometimes. In fact, I have a very funny story about uh, that that whole thing. Uh, so there's one time. No, when, sometimes uh, just we finish sometimes. Uh, so so anyway, so so I'll tell my lecturers I'll be called on from time to time, and I had this partnership with them, so it would mean that either I would miss cuts or something, but they would give me a, a remedial after or something. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow, wow. So I had to do that because really, as I'll tell you in that story, there are times I'll be out of the country when people are doing exams and everything, and I would have to find, you know, ways around it. Then the other thing is that I partnered with. Um, our vice chancellor, because they always thought ISECAs are the good kids in campus. Uh -huh. The rest cause us trouble, yes, student yes, leaders, yes. Nini. But these guys are doing meaningful things. They bring meaningful conferences, meaningful corporate relationships to the school. So they really held us in high esteem. So a lot of my trips, even in uh, my year as president, were paid for by the universities because oh, yeah, I was representing yeah, yeah, yeah. the country. You know, oh, you're like a 23 year old, 99 year old, I mean, adult. But the, the funny thing is that this was not unique. Like a lot of Isaacs before me and after me went through the exact same. But as compared experiences. to. Yeah. No, I mean, like when I hear you. But story, yes, compared to the normal average student, this uh, is, we were living a totally different life. You're, totally you're, that's what I mean. You're life. literally an adult. You're fact, adulting. I remember sitting in class sometimes 
Uh, oh yes, and also partnered with my classmates that, you know, if there was a cut coming or assignments that needed to be done, then they would make sure that I get to know that this needs to be done. I would still do my assignments, my cuts and everything. Did you finish school? I did. I did. I passed. <laughs> I didn't pass with flying colors. Yes. That's why I was like in school. I didn't do very well in campus. But it's because at some point I was like, this, uh, this degree is not taking me anywhere. I say kids. So yes. I'm going to put my efforts into whatever. I make sure that I just at least get a degree for the sake of getting papers. But I knew that um, my degree yes. was not taking me anywhere. Let me tell you how crazy it was. There are times I used to sit in class and uh, maybe we are discussing something in computer science and they mention a city where something was done. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I've been there through Isaac. I've been to that city. What am I doing in this class? Like, what is the teacher, you know, the inspiring teacher don't even know me what to I do? Know. They don't even know what I know. And so I had a huge disconnect between getting the papers, but I said, let me just do my best. Let me get the papers. I don't care what happens after that. In fact, I shelved it. I've never done anything computer what, science. What's your I dad graduated. and sisters and siblings thinking? My dad called day? me a computer scientist for the very long time <laughs> because he never understood. He just used to hear, I've gone here, I've gone here, I've gone here. <laughs> He's not understanding where I'm getting the money to travel <laughs> and everything. Imagine? I just had my And you're not life. asking him for a coin, of course. Yeah, so let me tell you the story of what happened uh -huh. once. Um, when I was president, I needed to go to the international president's meeting. It was going to be in Estonia. So we had to go through Germany, Finland, uh, Eston yeah, then Estonia. First of all, shout out to Kadri, two weeks. Ayan Humal. Yes. Kadri has <laughs> been on... She's going to come to CTA, yes. a very good pal of mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she's been on the other CTA channel. Yeah. yeah she, I, saw, I saw her vote. She, she came to my office yeah. and we filmed her voting. Yeah, digitally. online, digitally. That now, the funniest crazy. thing is she hooked me up to their Ministry of Foreign Affairs for us to do something together. But that's a story okay. for another day. We know we'll get in there. So, so international day. president's <laughs> meeting is in, uh, is in Estonia. And... This, these conferences used to be very long. They used to be like 14 days. You have three meetings, you have post meetings, then you have like two weeks of, of sessions in between. And so the last week was coinciding with my final exams uh, in school. And so I had seen this coming from very early. <laughs> and so I remember going to the registrar or the guy who usually does so in the first calendar there used to be a provisional at a timetable for mm -hmm. exams then the final one would come out so i had kind of figured out that between the provisional and the final changes happened it meant somebody had the power to make some changes <laughs> so i went to the registrar and i'm like dude i'm going to represent the country in estonia uh, is there anything that can be done because there's only one set of courses that we were doing with a larger group and then the other set of courses, we are a small group of 20-something computer science students. So can we move it without affecting the calendar much? Dude is like, never happened, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I left his office, I'm like, that's what you think. We see. I went to the reg academic registrar. Ooh. I told him, I'm going to represent the country, there's no way I cannot represent the country. Like we, in Isaac we were taught to sell, so we mm. knew how to magnify things. <laughs> Um, and so I need an exemption in this thing and the registrar uh, tells me that, uh, the, the exams registrar tells me that this can't happen. He is like, if you can get me a letter from the vice chancellor, I'll get it done. I'm like, oh, is that all it takes? Remember, we were friends with the vice chancellor and especially his secretary. So I go to the secretary, tell them, I've been told that all I need is a letter from you and this magic will happen. So the vice chancellor gave it to me, took it back to the registrar, registrar gives instructions. Academic registrar gives instructions <laughs> to the exam registrar to move the exams for almost 200 and something students in mainstream uh, whatever courses and for my whatever to the next week after. What? By the way, some of my classmates until today don't know that I'm the one who did that. <laughs> they just wondered, the first calendar came out, exams like were on week one, because we used to always do exams week one and then we finish and either you hang around or mm. you go home. But then exams were pushed to week two and they didn't know why. You guys, first and foremost, <laughs> the way you were thinking as a 23-year-old is mind-blowing. I told you that. That's some, <laughs> that level of negotiating. Yeah, I learned lessons that first, things are moved by human beings. <laughs> so even until today, when you tell me bureaucracy is due, what, yeah. all I need to do is find out who has who, the power to make who this is a thing human happen. Being and I go straight for them, yeah. There's nothing that's done by, like, it's human beings who are behind these processes. So that taught me a lot in terms of that's such a powerful, pushing, simple pushing thing. things Things forward. are moved by human beings. Went to, went to Estonia, finished. I remember I was on the plane on the way back. 
like chopping for my final exams. Came back, did the exams. Yeah, passed. And life went on. Oh man, this <laughs> is such an incredible story. Let's take let's take a two-minute break. <laughs> we are coming back. <laughs> 